Well, how's it going, everybody? And welcome back to another episode here on the Tyler's Real Fishing YouTube channel. I'm glad that you guys are watching this video, and I'm very excited to announce that today I'm starting a brand new series that I don't know if I'm going to call it Tackle Tuesday or Tackle uh, Two Minute. Tuesdays, I don't even know. Whatever I'm gonna call it, this is going to be an episode that I release hopefully every single Tuesday, if not every other Tuesday. And it's going to be a more shorter form video, more focused around a specific fishing technique, or in a lot of the ideas that I have for the series, a lot of fishing tips that you guys wouldn't get in a normal fishing video. So a lot of, I don't even know how to explain it without actually doing the videos for you guys, but a lot of intricate details that can make you guys better anglers that are not necessarily fishing rod reel and, and, and you know, lure specific. And so today's video, as you guys saw from the title, is gonna be a shorter video, but it's going to be based on the idea of putting line on a brand new reel. Now, a lot of you guys out there throw bait casters, and if you haven't thrown a bait casting reel, uh, of course, I'll, I'll kind of explain what a bait caster is and kind of the advantages of that as opposed to a spinning reel. But I'm gonna show you guys the ways that I have found best, most time efficient, and saving money online to rig up a bait casting reel uh, for fishing. And before we get started, make sure you guys please hit the subscribe button and like this video. YouTube ranks videos on their platform by how much engagement it gets. So drop a comment below, hit the like button. It really, really helps me out. And I say we get started. So the rod and reel combo that I will be rigging up with some brand new line for today is the Team Lose Custom Black Speed Stick Rod and Reel Combo. This is a 7.3 medium heavy. I love this combo and I'm super excited to use it throughout this year. This will kind of be my, you know, pond hopping, general Texas rig, you know, jig type rod. And so I say we hop into the tackle storage area and figure out what kind of line we need. <clears throat> Got it. Got the line. So this here is my line bag. I have used this Bassmaster membership tackle bag for a long, long time for many different purposes. I've used it in high school as my lunch bag. I've used it to pond top, to throw to soft plastics, jigs, and line in. But right now, this functions as my uh, line bag. And so if you open up here, you can see I've got all sorts of different types of line in this bag. Not very organized. I know a lot of pros have whatever trays that have kind of the line that sit in the trays and they can spool from each tray. I don't have that. I'm a poor, I'm a poor YouTuber over here. And so I've got all my lines sitting in this compartment here. And so when it comes to spooling a bait casting reel, I've done it many ways in the past. And I don't know if there's a specifically right way to uh, rig up a bait caster with some line, but I've definitely found some best practices when it comes to rigging your bait caster with line. The first of that is using a backing material. And the second of that is buying quality line. Now I do not have a line sponsor, so I'm not paid to say this. Uh, uh, I have all, all sorts of different brands in here. I have Seaguar, I have Fanatic, I have Berkley, I have all sorts of brands in here. And so I really do use all sorts of lines, but Seaguar and Vizex is the line that I use most often. And so what I'm gonna rig this rod up with today is some 17 pound fluorocarbon for just ponds, you know, lakes, Texas rigs and jigs. And then my leader material is going to be a six pound monofilament. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take the band off the mono here, and we're going to fill the mono onto the spool to a certain amount, which I will discuss here in a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna first thread the six pound monofilament through each individual eye on the rod and reel combo. Now, if you are just rigging up a reel without a rod on it, then of course you don't have to put it on a rod, then rig your or feed your line through each individual eye to put it on the reel. But I do anticipate using this reel with this rod because they were created in conjunction for each other. And so I'm going to put the line through every single guide and to spare you guys the time of uh, watching me do this, we'll skip to the end. Okay, so we have the line all the way down at the bottom here. Come on, feed yourself in there. Boom. And there's all sorts of different spool designs on reels, and so each way of getting your line around the spool to tie it is going to be different depending on the reel. But I like to stick the line for loose reels especially inside of those small holes there and then wrap it around until the line goes around one time and then I grab the end. Now there's many, many times when I've messed up and of course the line has fallen down and I've had to re-stick it in. But one of the knots that I use is actually a Boy Scout knot. It is called the two half hitch. And what I do is I wrap it once around the inside of the loop and then once around the outside of the loop. Now the knot that you tie to your spool really doesn't matter because if you're, if you're putting on a backing material, you're not gonna be one of casting your lure all the way through the six pound mono because that's not going to hold on any sort of hook set or any sort of you know abrasion. And so once I tie the tag in there, I have, hopefully you can see it on the GoPro, my six pound mono on the reel. And so what I do now is I start reeling the line 
and I put the spool on the ground. Now there's many different types of, of, of ways that people do this, but what I use is actually putting it through my toes. So I want to put the GoPro on the ground and show you guys how I spool up my line. It's kind of a redneck way, but uh, it, it works for me. Okay, so if looking at feet isn't your thing, you may want to skip uh, this next part. I don't have any socks on. But what we're going to do here is we're going to get the line all the way tight against the spool. And the direction of which you spool your line onto the reel matters. So you'll see that, of course, line is spooled onto a reel in a, I believe, if you were to look at it, it's spooled on a counterclockwise way. So if you look at the spool, the line is, is if you would imagine it spooling on, it goes on counterclockwise. And so you want to make sure that your line is going on your reel the same way it's coming off the spool of the line. So if you see this here, imagine this line spool here in a smaller form is actually the spool that holds your line on the reel. And so you want your line to be going this way onto the reel as it brings it on. Now I don't know exactly how bad it is when you put your line on the opposite direction. I'm sure it would work just as fine, but I think in terms of memory, especially with mon monofilament and fluorocarbon, you want your line to go on the exact same way it's coming off. Now before we start reeling, make sure your drag is tightened down all the way because one thing that I've seen is that, especially with braided line, if you spool your line onto the reel without your drag being tight, you're going to end up not even noticing it, but having your drag slip a little bit, especially with a brand new reel, and your line is not going to be as tight on there as possible. You want your line to be very, very tight onto the reel when you're spooling it on. And so what I do is I get my body as far away from my toes as possible, I put my two uh, big toes right in the holes of the spool and then I start reeling. <laughs> and you don't wanna to go too fast or you'll actually burn your toes. Wearing socks helps, but it was nice and warm outside today, so no socks for your boy. Shout out to my college fishing partner from freshman year, Josh Bensima. He actually taught me this technique. And so I'm gonna put the line on there and I'll show you guys the exact amount. But you want to put enough backing on there. First off, it saves, it saves money. Oh, dang it. I dropped it off my toes. First off, using backing saves money because this whole entire spool of monofilament, I believe it's like, a thousand or two thousand yards it was like six dollars as opposed to 200 yards of fluorocarbon at 24 dollars and so i want to use as much of this as i can but not too much in order that i can make a full cast and maybe a cast and a half with the fluorocarbon that will be used on top of this so figuring out how much backing to put on the reel before you stop and attach the fluorocarbon to uh, the leader material is really dependent on what pound test of material you're going to throw for fluorocarbon or braid, whatever you're using uh, on, the out, on the outside of the six pound mono. And so that really comes with trial and error. I've had many, many mistakes where I've put on, you know, too much backing or too little backing. And so I have to use more expensive fluorocarbon on the top of the reel. But really I found, especially for 17 pound fluorocarbon, I want to rig this thing up to about half to maybe five eighths capacity uh, in terms of how much line the reel spool can hold with the six pound mono. So we're gonna keep going here, almost through. Because what you do not wanna do is have too much backing on there because when you put not enough fluorocarbon or braid and you cast out there, you're gonna cast your knot that you're gonna tie between the leader material and the top material all the way through your guides. And I've had several times when I've, I've landed the fish, but I made a super long cast and I had to set the hook with my six pound mono outside of the reel itself, which is just very, very sketchy. And so I think I have about the right amount of line that I wanna have there on the reel. About, about you know five eighths or one half of the spool and I'm gonna cut it off. So the six pound monofilament is done. We're gonna stick it back in the line bag and we're gonna move on to the 17 pound fluorocarbon. So the next step in this process is to tie your six pound monofilament or whatever leader material you choose to use and your fluorocarbon or braid, whatever your top line is going to be to each other. That way that knot can be down in the middle of the spool and have the line that you're actually going to use to fish cover up that knot. So the knot that I use for this purpose is called the double uni knot and I have the GoPro here. Hopefully it will be able to capture kind of the essence of what this knot is, but it is just a connection knot between two different types of lines. The reason why I like using a thin leader material and that's really the choice of the six pound is because unless you're Matt Allen and Tim Little from Tactical Bass and I don't know what those guys, they have steel thumbs. Uh, they love to have basically only a 10 or 20 yard leader material of fluorocarbon and the rest braid. But when I was up there fishing with them, you'd have that knot when you cast every single time, that knot would spool really fast out of your reel and shoot out of the rod, not only hurting your thumb, but also hurting your guides as well. And they said it didn't hurt the guides, but it sounded horrible. So I don't really feel comfortable doing that. And so I'm willing to use a little bit more fluorocarbon than they do in order to have a skinnier, skinnier knot. And so that's why these six pound mono is very, very helpful. You're gonna have the ends here going opposite directions. So on the bottom, we're gonna have the six pound mono 
and we're going to wrap that around underneath here, around and create a loop. And then I'm going to wrap it around itself inside the loop two or three times because we're not going for strength here, we're just connecting the lines. There's not really a need. Like I said, if you're ever casting all your line from the leader to the six pound backing, you're probably in trouble. So then I'm gonna tighten that just a little bit there, and then I'm gonna take the top level, which is the 17 pound fluorocarbon, and I'm gonna do the opposite thing. I'm gonna take a, a loop from the opposite direction and then wrap it around two or three times. All right, and once you do that, you lubricate both sides and then tighten it up here and you'll see the lines go together. Boom, and that you have a nice small connection knot. That's what's really most important to me is that you can use whatever line you want for backing and whatever line you want for leader, but I prefer to have the skinniest backing line, not only because it's cheap, but also because it leads to a small knot that your line has to cover up. The larger the knot, as you'll see after we start spooling it onto the reel, the more line you have to have to cover up that knot. And you guys get the gist about putting your toes through the spool. So we're gonna do that one more time. We're gonna reel the line all the way through the guides. And then one thing that I like to do, it's personal preference, but I found it's best for your line care and for not hooking the line on casts and such, or hooking the knot on casts, is make sure that your knot here ends up in the middle of the spool. So right now, if I reel, you'll see the knot ends up on the edge. And I don't like when the knot ends up on the edge because I found that that is a lot harder for the reel when the spool, when the, I guess the spool knob moves back and forth to cover up that knot. So what I'll do is I'll strip off some line, then I'll reel a little bit more. And if it doesn't match up, I'll strip off a lot more line and then keep reeling. And eventually you'll get it right to where the, the knot ends up in the middle of the reel. I promise it does. Boom, that's about, as even as I can get it. And then once you do that, keep on reeling and use the rest of the spool for your fluorocarbon. One thing that I did growing up a lot is I did not have my spools full of, of, of line, whether it was you know lack of money to buy line or whether I just didn't think it was important. The more that I fish, I've actually realized it's very, very important to have a line, a spool full of line because your gear ratio gets messed up when you have less line on the reel. And it also casts a whole lot less far when you have less line. Of course, that, you know, logically makes sense. But I'm saying in terms of the distance that the line can go, it, it feels like it has to have more inertia to pull the line off of an empty spool than it does a full spool. And so we had just enough 17 pound fluoro to fill up the reel, and that is about perfect. I like to have the line, hopefully you can see that there, where it's even with the, the change in metal uh, color on the, on the end of the reel, the top of the spool. And that's exactly how you do it. So that is it, boys and girls. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. I love teaching you guys some of the intricacies of how to become a better bass fisherman. And of course, this is not necessarily just bass fishermen. I think this applies to all fishermen across the board. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button, like this video. Uh, you know that notification bell as well? That actually is kind of like the new subscribe thing. So hit that as well. And we'll see you guys on the next episode of Tips, Tips and Tackle and Tuesdays and whatever. See ya.